Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Yankee Center podcast, and we are here to talk some baseball, in the words of A-Rod. And today, we are all here. Eddie, Tom, how you guys doing? I'm good. Um, I was doing pretty well with the Yankees' performance on this two series against Tampa and Baltimore. And then I got oh, hit I with muted myself. Uh, <laughs> and then I and then I got hit yeah. with some unfortunate news today. It hurt. Giancarlo Stanton has yeah. been placed on the injured list, and my mood has tanked a bit since I've heard that. So I'm sure we'll dive much deeper into that. But I was like yes, saying I'm frustrated. But I'll leave it at that that for now. But I'll go into more detail later. So. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, um, we are coming off a pretty good trip right now. Um, we just went four and two on this trip, I believe. Um, two against the Rays and two against Baltimore since we last did an episode. So that's you know four and two. You take that; it's solid. Um, would have been great to get the sweep, of course, yesterday. That was you know it was a shitty loss, but you know we accept it. It happened. But um, right now I'm feeling pretty good about the team. But yeah, like you said, the injuries do put a damper on things, especially because we've really been healthy in the lineup, at least most of the year, at the exception of Voight and tiny little things during the season, but you know, nothing unusual though. Um, But now, you know, we're back to Stanton, not just with an injury, but it's a quad strain, which is a very Stanton judge, big guy type of injury. So if anything, that's kind of what worries me the most about that. It's, it's just very, is the kind of thing that would keep him out for a while. If like, I can see it becoming something more than a 10 day stint, which is what it is right now, but um, it's odd for sure. And then Hicks, of course, has his um, wrist issues and that I don't expect him to play again this year. I'm being honest. I'll be shocked. And for that reason, the Yankees got to be active on the trade market. We talked about it in our chats and um, I, it'd be irresponsible for Cashman not to make a move or a bat right now with Stanton and Hicks both in doubt right now. Yeah, we are. We're 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 pretty fucked. <laughs> like if the pitching is gonna keep us afloat for now, it's more about the long term outlook when acquiring a bat. I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, the luxury tax plan may need to uh go away. Uh, Tom, I can promise you, it's not gonna go away. I can I promise wish, you. I wish it would. I wish it would, but. You know, this is a uh, this is a nightmare. I'm not necessarily worried about standing because eventually quad strain will you know heal. That'll be fine. But like, it, you hope <laughs> a, a wrist a wrist sheath is very interesting and scary to say the least. Uh, He's like, not gonna play. Yeah, it's like this thing that like protects your tendon. It like holds it together or something like. And it's just like, uh, one, how did you hurt that? Second, why? Why? I think why? he played his last game as a Yankee. I, I really do think he might I have played back. his last but Yeah, but the thing is, if, if he misses all of this year, if you're Cashman, how do you possibly go into next year saying, this guy is my starting center fielder after a year of mediocrity, another year of mediocrity, and injuries the whole way? That's it's pretty messy, and you have no idea what he's gonna be when he comes back. I if mean, I, he's, he's, he's going believes through a lot. Guys, though, Cashman believes in his guys. That's why Gary's still here. Yeah, but Cashman's a moron sometimes. Yeah, but Gary, it's actually working out pretty well. Yeah, well, you know what? The Gary Sanchez talk. People need to pipe down a little because it's been one good week. Give him more time. Yeah. I'm not saying he's gonna suck. I'm not. I'm just saying. Before saying, we all man. start saying on Twitter, like everyone has, oh, look at the metrics. Gary's elite again. He's so good. Okay, well, look, wait till the end of the season and then come back to me because right now I'm still not sold. Made I'm a, not made, sold. Made, made, a, made a big change. No leg kick anymore. Well, you know what? He has a, he, people are pointing out his um, above 100 OPS plus and weighted runs created, but guess what? The league-wide offensive numbers suck, so those stats are a little skewed this year. He has yes, a 720 out of out of, out of a le- level playing field. He is above average. Yes, but I don't care. I don't accept a 193 batting average as a quality player. I'm going to be honest. I mean, the batting average could, could the batting average obviously could be better, but you know, 
he's Could he's be. still doing very well for himself. He's taking his walks, hitting dingers. He's like he has Monty Grandall, really. Uh, so you know, let's not go there. You know. Now I can only imagine what he'd be doing statistically if the balls were still juiced. And like that think, ball that that ball that he got robbed of, that probably go goes out. You have you know? no idea how much the Gary talk infuriates me. You really don't. You know, I'm I just very want, close. I just, people I just suck him anger. off so much and it's I so sad. It's true. I, just, I just root for the guy. You know? I hope he does good too, but we don't. We need to cut this session of just sucking this though. dude off and assuming he's gonna be great when he has not shown consistently that he's gonna do that always. Like it's he's, not a given. Yeah. It's not yeah, a given. He's been, he's been great recently, so like. Oh yeah, recently his last week totally means he's gonna be great forever. Totally, I'm sold. I at seven at seven twenty three OPS, man, I it's think great. It does. I think it does. Tom, you need to grow up. You said the Tom, same thing about Clint. Don't, don't and don't care. start me with Clint is getting better. He had, he had a home run yesterday. He had a Good single hit. yesterday as well. I don't right, care. Single. Okay. I'm sorry. Still, Clint still, sucks. Still, still a long way to go, though. Long way yeah, to go. same with yeah. Gary. Same thing applies. I mean, I disagree. Yeah. How? Truthfully, I Gary has had a great week. How are you going to yeah. let that override what we've seen in 2020? A deep, he was very streaky in 2019, although he had his moments, and then horrible 2018. You're gonna let four games override exactly the overwhelming evidence of what we've seen. It's not Aaron Judge who he has a bad four games. Well, it's Aaron Judge. He's done nothing to make me doubt him. Absolutely. In his time on the field, Gary's he's been back. great. Injuries. Let's be, let, let's be honest, Gary's back. Oh, shut the fuck up. No. Is he in the lineup today? Did they did they release the lineup yet? He's not in the lineup today. No way. He's I guarantee you. Higgy's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad. Yeah. Well, with with uh, Stanton out, you could see him at DH. Okay, you know what? Maybe they they can actually do that. That that's possible. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Gary's back doing his thing. Uh, Clint, Clint's not back yet. I'm not ready to say that Clint's back. Yeah, I, 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 I rescind my clinch back from two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Okay, he's not I'm glad back to hear that. Yeah, he, we, to, you'll be you'll I, be doing I, the same I thing made, with Gary. I, I made show. a deal. I made a deal with Luke that I would have to wait two weeks, but like Clint would have to have a really good two weeks before I can say clinch back. And he's only had like two, three days of. Luke it was like two. Confidence. It was days. <laughs> yeah, really. So like, it has to be like a consistent thing. He has to go on like. A hitting streak or something, or a homer streak, something, just something. God, I'm just. So, He's got to be better defensively. The thing with Gary is too. Like I saw one guy, I can't think of his name. He broke down like three stretches of Gary this year. He he put like um, I think the first week it was like 32 plate appearances, really good. And then he put the middle part where he sucked, and then he put the next part where he was good again. And I was like, okay, yeah, you can say that all you want, but. If you take away, let's say, I mean, I hate to play this game, but take away the first two games of the season, I guarantee you that first stretch looks very, very different. And then yeah, you take you away can't even take away the first two. Okay, games but I'm just, but that's counted. the game of small sample sizes, they're though. Counted. That's my point, though. They counted. But that's the game of small sample sizes. That's my point, Tom. So why are you small sample out sizes don't mean shit. Average if it's a small sample size. Small sample sizes don't mean shit, which is why I don't care about this recent stretch right well, you now. You just said small sample sizes don't mean shit, but you're complaining about his low batting average. Yeah, for the season! <laughs> for yeah, the season! If he, gets, if he gets three straight hits, his batting average will be like 220. Okay, and that'd be a step in the right direction. Still not there, but yeah, step. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say is that if you just get, if you have like one more good week, right, your batting average looks fucking phenomenal like okay aaron judge, was hit, aaron judge a week ago was hitting like 250 and now he's hitting 300 he raised his bat okay well here's a really good question the when's the last time we saw gary sanchez have two really good weeks we're about to that's that's my point though that we're would in be the midst of it yeah we but this is my point though if he has two in, really good weeks that's we something right, he hasn't done in years we are right Probably. in the thick of it we are right in the thick of gary hot streak he's been doing very well for himself well, that's okay, so there you go. So I just dispro- I just proved you wrong. Well, why I, my point I matters? Didn't, you didn't just prove me wrong. You just, I did. You just said what's happening now. No, but he it's hasn't happened, happened yet. Now. It is happening. You're, you're speculating. You're yeah, getting it's speculating. Speculating it one four hundred and forty feet yesterday. And so does fucking Chris Carter. He still bats one ninety with forty home runs every yeah. year. Who gives a shit? 
Well, he's not hitting, and he doesn't have the on-base percentage that Gary does. Yes, his 330 on-base percentage really makes me go, wow. Well, think about it. Once the BABIP evens out, you're going to have him be like... Oh, yeah, lost the BABIP even out. The His Babbitt stats are going to look real to good out the season. The BABIP has, has to even out. Uh, oh, of course. You look at his expected me- WOBA, he looks real up. good. So so even even with even with <laughs> the bad luck, even with the bad luck, he's still an above-average offensive player in this dead ball season. Exactly. Yeah. Gary Sanchez is now the best of the best. Out. We suck now him off. He's as good as he gets. Out. Now it evens out, and you're looking at an all-star catcher. Huh. I, I've been hearing about the bad luck for like three years. Like, well, it if is it, bad luck. At Let's some honest, point, when when it, you, but when is he going to get lucky? If it's three years, of, like if you say he's starting to get lucky, I've been he hearing, hearing one 440 feet I've yesterday. been hearing it from Twitter that, oh, man, Gary's been so unlucky all season. Rah, Maybe dude. that works for a little bit. Well, think about, think about it now, though. Like he's already above average. And now, with a little more luck, can be well above average. Yes. Well, guess what? He has to do it. Until he does, I don't give a yeah. shit. But he's doing it. For a week! Who cares? What do you mean, who cares? It's a week! A it week a sample week. size means it so was a little! a week, man. I don't care! You don't have one good week and say a player care, is back. That, it's a 162-game season! Do you care that Aaron Judge is hitting 500 in, like, the last week? Yes, because he has an actual well, track he, record he, and more yeah, of a sample size, you fuck. Sample sizes. Okay, how about you look at Aaron Judge's entire season, though? 723 OPS from Gary versus Judge over 1,000. Very different fucking seasons, Tom. Very fucking different. Yeah, but Gary's a catcher. That doesn't matter. It does matter. I mean, that, look at the catcher production. The bar is still different with Gary regardless. He doesn't oh, catch well. It. He's not a, a good catcher. Bit, with a little bit more luck, he's going to have an 800 OPS. If he, if he gets to an 800 OPS and he's a good catch and he's even an average catcher, I'm more Sanchez, than satisfied. Think about it. Think about it this way: Aaron Judge's OPS was in like the 800s last week, and now it's like over a thousand because he hit a few homers in a row. Gary will just have like a two homer game, and his OPS will be well over 800, and you'll be shitting in your mouth. Okay, and if that happens, fucking great. How about he actually does it now? He will do it. He's been doing it. Are you going to tell me right now, if I come back in a week and he's back to below 700 OPS, you'd be shocked? Because I wouldn't even be shocked a little bit. Not even a little. I, mean, I wouldn't be shocked if anyone gets in a slump. Sorry to keep dropping that, by the way. I'm yeah, so that, that's team. exactly my point. You're saying he's already doing it. He's already back. But you just he's said yourself, back. he can, he he can easily back. get cold again. So who cares? I mean, he is back. You were such a child, Tom. I can't this, even deal with This sometimes. conversation is like spinning me in a million different I directions. I feel like I'm talking to Rain Man. It's horrible. Anyway, well, moving. Uh, you know, I'm just. I'm just He's logical. Yes, I'm just we know. I'm a smart guy. Anyway. And it just feels I'll like. End the, I feel like you two have a deep rooted hatred in Gary Sanchez. I literally right. said, I want him to rate. a little bit. Uh, but do you, though? Yes. Would you, rather, would you rather me be wrong and you be right or me be right and you be wrong? I'd rather you be right if it means we're winning. Well, good news. I'm right. Well, clearly you're not yet. Clearly I am. He's, at, he's an above average offensive player. Oh, you hurt me so much. You oh. killed me. You killed me. You just hit one like 440 feet yesterday. I think Tom. You're acting like that matters. It does matter. It's it bandwagon too much. Clint hit a yeah. He's becoming too close to him. It's kind of sad, actually. But you know what? It's all I, right. I see the influence rubbing off on Tom. Sad right. people are allowed to be on the podcast. I, it's quite, all right. I quite, I quite like Gary. I and can't I tell you, which Gary you. did. You, which Gary did you mean? The player. Oh, okay. I, I like the other guy too. Nice well, he's guy. stupid, but it's okay. He's a nice guy. <laughs> um. Anyway. Then it's hurt. Yeah, Stan's hurt too. That's not ideal. I mean, he's been having a great year. He was, you know, he wasn't doing great right before he got hurt. But I mean, maybe that could have been because he got hurt. I mean, we really don't really know. But either way, it doesn't excuse it. It's not what you want well, at all. Definitely. But yeah, you know what? And on the season though, he has an 882 OPS. You you like that? He has nine home runs. That's fucking great. Um, if he can just stay on the fucking field, he's gonna hit. It's as simple as that with John Carlo. But he has to prove he can stay on the field. So I'm gonna stay on the to field. To be honest, I'm I'm not worried. To be honest, I'm worried. I'm, I, I think it's it's reasonable to say you can be worried given what we saw in the last given couple of years. Given that it's Giancarlo. Yeah, but it's, it's about staying on the field, though, not talent. Exactly. Correct. Correct. 
And every leg yeah. injury he's had in his career, uh, he's never came back after. I, I was taking a look at his yeah, injury like, history. Well, you do have strains, hamstring that, strains. You do have to it was all more yeah. than that. He was yeah. he got hit by the prospect. Remember, a prospect hit him in the leg. That was fucking wild. And it screwed him up. Yeah, What's but this? you know what? We got to see what happens. I'm not sold on him being healthy just yet, but I hope he is. I hope he is. I think I think we'll see John Carlo in a month. Um, no, I think I think he'll be back. I don't think it's a season-ending thing at all. Obviously, that's just no, no, being he'll be dramatic. Back yeah, in June, fifteenth. I think that's reasonable. I I think two weeks would be like the I bare think. minimum, bare minimum, and I, I expect think, longer than that. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think you're gonna see John Carlo Stanton next Monday once he's eligible. That'd be the first be time Stanton. that John Carlo Stanton. This is the first time that Joe Carlos Stanton, that would be the first time that he's ever came off, I think, in the minimal amount of days. I could have swore I heard everything. that before with him. And Aaron Boone, I'm sick of you. I'm sick of Aaron Boone. He's a liar, and I don't know why I believe anything this dude says. It went from, oh, Stanton will play tomorrow, maybe, in Texas, to now 10-day. It's just like, can he just shut up and not say anything? I'm and convinced. I, and, I, and I keep believing him. I'm convinced that John Carlo acts not accidentally purposely fell over and hurt his leg when he found out they were going to play him in the outfield. I'm kind of convinced. Well, now I, I know Clint, he'll never play the outfield again. Sometimes. Say what? I think Clint does that sometimes. Yeah, but he actually does always play the outfield. John Carlos doesn't want to play the outfield. Mm. Hopefully the Yankees don't make the World Series because then we will just not be with Stanton or he will have to play on the bench. Because. Yeah, we, we're going to need him. I mean, that's the reality of it. The offense is really my biggest concern with this with this entire team still. It really is. I'm not yeah. that worried about the pitching. I'm, I'm really not. The, the rotation's been good. The bullpen is going to be elite when everyone's back. And it already is really good. I mean, and even the guys that we didn't necessarily expect to be great, like um, despite a bad game yesterday, Wandy Peralta um, and a couple of the other guys, I mean, the YC got breaking out. I mean, we've had some really good names do, do the thing, man. I'm feeling good about the pitching. Yeah. Why not? I enjoy Wandy. Wandy's a good time. You know, the change up to Franco was an idiotic selection of pitch in my opinion. It was but, not the best, but you know what? It happens. It's his first run no, I, I still I still I still like him a lot. He's still very good. So I think he's I think that was honestly a really good deal by Cash. Obviously it would have been great to have another outfielder, but with that said this is a really good reliever, I think. I really do think so. And he's under control for three more years. And if he is what I think he can be, which is just even a, an above-average MLB reliever, you take that because that's a hot commodity in baseball. Yes. So, by the way, we won. To, to recap briefly, we won two out of three from Tampa. We won a series in Tampa, and we won against Baltimore, obviously. Just want to yeah. say, just want to say, feels very nice to win a series against Tampa. Absolutely. Uh, that, they exceeded my expectations, too. Yes, that was very we, doubt. Very I'll doubt. say that. We didn't hit at all, though. We did not hit. No nope. series. Uh, the trop, is, especially with this dead ball, the trop is just a hellhole of offense for offense. It's just, we just don't score there. And, uh, you know, but we beat them at their own game. We outpitched them two out of three. And that's how... That's how we won. Damn. We, we played their game and beat them. We pitched. We outpitched them. Garrett Cole, baby. And you see, that's how you know this Yankees team isn't the same as last year. Last year, they wouldn't have outpitched Tampa ever. And that's the difference in this year's team. The pitching is so much better. It's just, you got to hit. That's it. You got to hit. And right now, I think that um, they will hit. As long as, again, if John Carlo is back, I'll feel good. I'll feel pretty good because Hicks, you know, he wasn't even – he was hitting towards the end. But, I mean, overall in the season, I mean, um, he wasn't even giving a ton of offense. But I think if you can even get an average bat in that spot, you'll – it'll be enough. And I'm thinking that Cashman will eventually make a trade probably. But, um, you know, the more I think about it, though, I just don't know – who that trade will be. I mean, it could be like a, maybe a Joey Gallo, maybe a David Peralta. There's a lot of guys out there. I don't think they're going to go to Floreal this year, anytime soon at least, although I would love it. But he, he literally just got called up to AAA after like a handful of 
double A at bats. Dude, the money, the money stuff is really is what's going to determine, you know, our uh, our targets. I guess you can say. Um, we 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 only have limited funds. Uh, we gave a, some of them to Brett Gardner. Uh, it just felt like saying that. I never wanted to do that. I accepted it when he was back because I figured, you know what, he'll probably be at least okay as a backup, but not but he, even that. He's been, especially with this dead ball that I keep mentioning. Exactly. It's just like, he does look a tick slower with the bat, and it's, you know, dead ball now. So I genuinely, I'm standing by this. I said this a while ago. I'm still very concerned about DJ. I think I'm the concerned. dead ball is dead ball is going to be a problem. I'm concerned about the power, not the bad balls. No, that's my point though. I think that without the power, DJ is still a good player, but is he even remotely worth what we gave him? I mean, it's at it least be, up for it, debate. It would be nice to see him park if you and have us kind of calm our our worries, our worries, you know. You know, and even the average, although I would like I'm a 272 average ain't bad, a 364 OBP, not bad at all still. Like that's mm. Solid. I like it a little bit higher, ideally. I mean, 280, 290 even, but um, I just need some more power, not even home runs, just extra base hits even, because he's not even getting those. I mean, on the season, I think he only has, like, a couple doubles tops. Like, not a lot. Yeah, it can't, it can't be all singles. Yeah, like, right now on the season, he only has, uh, I see, five doubles, and he has the three you homers. So, you're, you're talking eight your extra wallet. base hits. You look in your wallet, you see a bunch of ones. You want to start adding some tens and twenties and fifties and hundreds. There you go. Exactly. Eddie, are you concerned about DJ yeah. Power? I mean, he joined us. I mean, we don't really know when the ball got juiced. I guess we could say. I mean, there was always a home run uptick starting around. I don't remember the specific year, but I think 2019 was when stuff really boomed, and then. 26 home runs, uncharacteristic for him. And the way his numbers are looking, I mean, they're looking a lot closer to what they were in Colorado. Season in Colorado. Yep, exactly. Than where they went to 2018, which I don't know if the ball was juiced, but it wasn't at 2019 levels. I don't think it was as dead as it was now, but it, this is what the numbers are looking at 15 home runs, the 276 average. Like, so like the really OBP to... is up. Like he's walking more than he was in Colorado. Yeah, it is. Which is, it is. Good, but... He only had a he only had a three twenty one on base percentage that but year. But even the slugging is down right from from that year. So I think yep. if he can even get the slugging, like let's say he got it up to what it was his last year in Colorado, that's a four twenty eight slugging. Right now he's at a three sixty four, which is really low. That's you're talking like a sixty point bump. That gets his OPS close to eight hundred. So if he get so hypothetically, if it evened out to that and he got the average up a little, yeah. You can work with that. Like that's it's a doable, solid leadoff hitter. That's good, but obviously our, expecta- our expectations are a lot right. higher for DJ after the last two years. A lot higher than that. Uh, be better. Yeah. That'd be nice. I mean, because it's he's just not hitting the ball hard. I mean, his average exit velocity is a lot lower this year. Like not by a little. We're talking a lot. It's 40th percentile this year. 2020 it was 86, and 2019 it was 92nd. In what? In 2021, it's it's he was 40th in average exit no, velocity. No, no, no. Oh, average exit velocity. Yeah. Oh, he's got, so he's got to hit the ball harder. Yeah, straight up. In 2020, 2019, he was 86 and 90 in 90 seconds. So that's a big, big gap right yeah, there. That correlates to the lack of power because you kind of need to hit the ball hard to get it out of the park. Yeah. No, exactly. I, it all it all plays well, together. And but he's walking a decent amount. Like yeah. that's not even the issue at all. Like he's getting on base in a in that way. Actually, his walk rate—I didn't even notice this. It's a lot higher than ever. Last year it was 40th. The year before that it was 29th. This year he's in the, um, the 77th percentile for walk percentage. It can correlate to, you know, not being able to hit for power. I guess you can say. Yeah, you know, clearly something's a little off. I'm hoping it's a mechanical thing. Like if it's a mechanical thing, that's what you want it to be because you know he'll fix that eventually. If it's like a dead ball thing, then that's a that's a big issue. So yeah, we're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to see. Eddie, is Eddie still yes. here? By the way, oh, okay. I I, I saw the I saw the light 
on the Skype call, like light up, but I wasn't hearing any sound from you. And I was uh, like, I was like, is Eddie having one of the technical difficulties again? I was like, oh no. But no, I, I think we've been good recently with that. Yeah, we have. Oh, don't jinx that. Okay. Huh? Uh, but yeah, are there any other injuries that we had? Because it feels like everyone, you know, Geo's a little hobbled. Yeah, I mean, I can give updates on guys that are coming back soon. Hopefully, um, Zach Britton's actually just started his um, he started throwing at um the Scranton field. He'll be back in two weeks. Yeah, he's gonna start a rehab assignment very soon. I think actually maybe today, if I remember right. I remember hearing Monday, yeah. but um, and Severino just threw a bullpen. No, well, it wasn't a bullpen. It was live BP at um Steinbrenner Field. So that was really cool. He threw to Jim Dominguez actually. He flew out, so that was fun. Yeah, I mean that's you know, we we should mention that Jason Dominguez has started playing extended spring games and that's always fun, you know. He, I think he'll he'll get a call in a month or two. I think he'll get to the next level to low A hopefully. But um we'll yeah. see. Probably. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard GCL. I don't really want him in GCL. Yeah, I don't think he needs GCL. I mean, if they do that, I would do it like in a week or two, if anything. Like get that over with. Okay. Quick. I don't I think the season month. starts there until June. Uh, okay, I'm then if, sure. if, if at most I would say maybe if they really want to do that, have him play there for June and then July, have him go to Low A and have him finish off the season there. Maybe. I mean, if if they really insist on it, that's probably how I would handle it. Yeah, just, you know, um, what's that? Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did did anyone hear a phone ring? No, did not. Okay, that was weird. Uh, Interesting. That, I just heard a phone ring in my earbuds. That was just so bizarre, but whatever. This is, you know, Eddie cursed us with the technical stuff so now that's gonna happen but yeah jason the is you know sorry guys it's all good it, if they start him in the gcl i won't be mad they have obviously they know jason better than we do so like i'm just gonna let it ride who cares uh but yeah next starting starting next year is gonna be like a true f- fast track situation in which we're gonna get his ass up here as soon as possible because you know that dude just looks like a major league player like that dude just like He's got the look, if that makes sense. Like, that dude's going to rake. No, I know what you mean. He's that, that guy has all the tools. He has the right attitude. I mean, I, I don't see him being a bust. I think he's going to be solid. It's really just a um, matter of when, really. He, he's going to dictate when he makes it. Mm. Yeah, really. Uh, you can't keep a guy like that down for long, especially, you know, with, you know, Hicks' injury. Like, they they very well could be. A, and obviously, left field is, is undetermined as well. Uh, but like, so there are going to be some outfield opportunities in the coming years, potentially. And, and yeah, might as well just, you know, uh, get them on the fast track, get them, get them, get them going, get them playing in real games. Then, you know what, if he shows an extended spring training that he's ready for blow away instead of, you know, GCL ball, don't be afraid to be a little aggressive with him. Totally. Well, I would agree with that. I think, um, I think mentally he can handle that. So I have something I want to discuss. This is what I would consider one of my bigger surprises so far. Um, and it's definitely relevant after last game. Um, I did not expect to see Domingo Herman be a better starter than Jordan Montgomery this year. I yeah, was not that's... expecting that. That's I was, been, I was that's thinking that yesterday. Like, that, that was not the turn I was ready for, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, Montgomery's kind totally of consistent. pissed me off. Yeah, he, Montgomery's been really rough, man. I mean, like yesterday not, was just not against Tampa, though. It was very no, no. Yesterday. Yesterday was rough. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday was, like, legitimately unacceptable. Like, against a horrible team, I might Like, he seen. was non-competitive. Like, that was just like, what the fuck? You know, I, I can tell you exactly what Monty's issue is right off the bat. He's and closing. he's not doing what he does best, and that's limiting hard contact. That is his yeah, biggest no. issue right now. Every year, he's been, that's even when he was struggling, he was still limiting hard contact a fair amount. And we had to, we'd always say, you know, he's just getting a bit unlucky. And that was definitely true at, at the time, at least. But now... 
I mean, he's given up hard contact at a very hard rate. I mean, he's 30, 30, um, six percentile on average exit velocity. And, you know, it's, it's not like he's again, getting unlucky. You look at his expected ERA his middle of the pack. His fastball spins, not very good. His curve spin is actually very low. I mean, it's well, then again, it, it was, it's been low in previous years too. It's more about the command when it comes to those pitches, but, um, it's it's just a tough thing with him, man. I'm hoping that he can get back to more of what we saw at times last year. Because last year, he was up and down, but he looked really good at times, man. He had some special outings. Yeah, I mean, last week it showed, you know, exactly the kind of talent that he has, but he hasn't been consistent at all. So, it's really, he's just got to really get kicked right in the wiener. I think a really good wiener kick could really just open up this guy. To being a better pitcher, you know? Yeah. Because you know what? Nobody's ever kicked Jordan Montgomery in the dick. And, you know, let's just do that. Test it out. Because he deserves a good dick kick after the well, shit. Well, should it be a yesterday. ball kick or a dick kick? There's a big no, difference. Right? No, no, no. Not in the balls. Not in the beans. Not in the beans. So we're the talking dick. We're talking the wiener. Wow. Like, he deserves I, that. He deserves I actually, it. once I was taking BP, um, my high school oh. team, okay. this one of my coaches, you know, he decided, hey, hey, I'm going to fuck with this kid. I'm going to I'm gonna start throwing re- really hard. But, of course, when he threw hard, he had no command. So, you know, got right, me, got right in the wiener. Kind of hurt. Yeah. Uh, Does he need it like that? Like, that'd be, that would hurt. You know, just like, he deserves... To be punished. He went. It we literally ball. went numb for a while. It was pretty bad. It was okay. a rough time. Yeah, we went there. Uh, uh, you know, the shit he pulled yesterday just, <laughs> just really irks me, man. Like, like he was so bad. It's like, not what you want. <laughs> He wasn't competitive. So, first inning, it's two quick ground outs, and then there's this double that hits the line. And you can make you can make an, an argument that Clint could have gone there and caught the ball. It had a 60% catch probability. You can make a strong argument that he should have gone there. But after that, you know, as a pitcher, it's your job to settle down. To no, you're right. Out. He had, he only, all he had to do was get one out, and he couldn't yeah. do it. And he gave up two. A lot out. of two out hits. Yeah. Oh, well, yes. That wasn't that wasn't just a Montgomery issue. That was an everyone yeah. issue. That was uh, yeah. every, everyone kept giving up uh, you know, fucking uh two out runs. It was ridiculous. Yep. It was ridiculous. We gotta stop doing that. Stop stop yeah. doing that. Like uh, you know, the the Wandy Peralta was a two out run. The Michael, I believe the Michael King run that he gave up was a two-out run. Uh, you know, stop! Let's let's get that third out. Okay, let's do that now. I'm just, Herman's been nice. Yeah, Herman, Herman has been nice. Uh, you know, he's having a really good year, man. He's given Lang a decent amount too. I mean, he's been what I want. I mean, well, right now, if, you, if anyone's seen his fingers, we all know that that man has length. Yeah, <laughs> that man has the longest fingers I've ever seen in my life. And a really good thing too, he's not walking people either, which is great. I mean, he's he's actually one of the best at not walking people so far, and his spin rates are really solid. And the biggest thing so far that's probably giving him success is everybody's chasing his pitches, man. Like his chase rate's super high. I mean, people are clearly being fooled by his stuff, and and that's a recipe for not just current success, but future success. So that's definitely what you want to see. And just looking at his pitch usage, you know, it's the Yankee formula, man. The, the change up is getting used more than in previous three, years. Three out of right. the five pitchers are good right now. Yeah. And I think, I still think Tyone is going to be fine. It's just, yeah. it, again, it's just, it's a he shitty is, start. He is the Gary of pitchers, bad, lots of bad luck. It, difference is I have hope for him. <laughs> I have hope. You can't, have hope. You, can't, you can't not have hope for Gary. I have slight hope for Gary. I'll be honest. I do have slight hope, but I, every time I get that slight hope going, I just remember the past, and I. it's kind of like with, a, with an ex. It's kind of rough. It's kind of rough. Yeah, I don't have that much hope. Bullshit. 
But I, Yankees, man, their their pitching formula, more changeups, it's working, man. It's working this year. It's literally working with every pitcher almost so far. And I don't think it's coincidence. Yeah, I mean, our pitching has been very, very nice. It's time for the offense to start helping them out a little bit, though. Yeah, I mean. Because, like, you know, obviously yesterday the pitching gave up 10 runs. That's very hard for the offense to make up for that. But, like, if, if the pitching gives up, like, four runs, can we can we score five? Can we squeeze out five? Like we yeah, did? no, I, I agree. I mean, the offense is supposed to be the strength of this team. So they right. definitely got to pick it up. And you, you look across at these guys, I mean, you know, some of them, they're, they're doing their job for the most part. G. Rochelle has been really solid on the season for the most part. I'm not really upset with him at all. Judge has been great. Um, it's really the outfield where the main culprits are for me. I mean, because at second base, DJ, he's not he's, – He's not obviously doing great, but he's serviceable, I'd call it. Like, it's not horrible. You go to first base, we just got Luke Voigt back, of course, and he's, he's had some good at-bats. It's like, he looks like he looks like he's in the right headspace, so I'm not really too worried about him. You go to shortstop, of course, Glaber's been out with COVID, but when he gets back, I mean, I'm hoping that he'll pick it up because he started showing some encouraging signs prior to that. So outfield is where I look for, clearly, you need some more production. And if he gets that, I think the rest will figure itself out, honestly. I do. Tyler Wade is the best. He's, I mean, he's on a mini hot streak. And I'm always, the only reason why I'm calling it that is because he's Tyler Wade. And with him, you have to take any small Hop on the get. Wade train, my friends. Hop on the Wade train. Three hit game, dude. Three this, hit game. This is Tyler Wade's world, and we're just living in it. Right, Eddie? No. He's batting 318 on the season, Eddie. And how many at bats? Like 15? Tom, we don't need to have this discussion. It's okay. The at bats don't matter. <laughs> Not for do. Tyler. Not for Tyler. How Not for does Tyler. Eddie feel? How does Eddie feel about the pitching, by the way? Because like I think we skipped over Eddie. And I feel bad. I mean, yeah. This is what I Montgomery. I, inconsistent. I mean, right now I wouldn't even trust Montgomery to start a playoff game. You just like you I don't know what you're gonna get from him. To start a little league game. I mean, right mm-hmm. now the playoff rotation would be pretty clear, and I think the big thing is um, that Sevy's gonna be the big wrench you're throwing in there later on because he's gonna change that outlook a bit for what mm-hmm. that playoff rotation could look like. Because if he's even again, seventy percent of Sevy being Sevy is better than everybody in the rotation except Cole probably. Like that's just yeah. being honest. Like he could, and that's because he's that good. So. And there's a real chance we get that. So if we do get that, you have your number two starter. I mean, if you have a top three of Cole, Severino, and for the most part, what Corey Kluber's been doing has been great, and he's your number three, I feel pretty good. I would feel pretty good. And you have Herman being your number four or Tyone, depending on how things play out. I, I think there's enough talent here, like I said, going into the season during spring training where shit's going to work out in the end. It's just a matter of where do these puzzle pieces fit. And right now, it's not quite clear yet outside of Cole and Kluber, but I think that it's all going to come together in the end. I do. Yeah. We're, we're good. We're a pretty good team. We're not that bad. We're pretty good. Let's, let, let's win more. I would like to win more. I mean, well, I think it's a good recipe for success. The, the best recipe for success is winning series, and we've done that. We did we did that twice on this road trip, and uh, we're about to uh, play Texas. So four game set. Let's hope. And you know, uh, shout out to Aaron Judge for you know being ridiculous. That's pretty cool. Uh, so we uh, we feel I feel like we should mention that because he's been ridiculous. Shout out to Garrett Cole for shutting down the Rays. Uh, is there really, is there, are there really any other topics? Uh, because like, I feel like we've touched on pretty much everything that's happened. Yeah, we pretty much got it all. I mean, just looking at the upcoming series, I mean, we're going to have some pretty good matchups in our favor, probably, honestly. I mean, the first game of the series should be an easy wash. I mean, it'd be inexcusable to lose this one. I mean, it's Cole, uh, the best pitcher in baseball, aside from DeGrom, maybe against Jordan Lyles, who has a 6.63 ERA on the season. So yeah. there's no excuse to lose that one. Game two, I mean, we got Tyone, so you're hoping he takes a step forward, and if he does, then hopefully we can do some damage because we're facing, um, I hate this guy. I was calling Fulty. We all know who Fulty is when I say that, Fulty right? Mavich. 
Yes. I don't you. know his name. Can you can you pronounce his name? Please? Mike Fultonavich. Okay. Oh yeah, him. him. I nailed. Yeah. Just kidding. I knew who it was. I, legitimate, I legitimately. Nailed wow. Him. So you just wanted to embarrass me on air. Okay, that's cool. But, um, <laughs> that's cool. But um, cool. game three, got Corey Kluber with the with against TBD. So he's probably pretty good. Whoever that is. Then the the fourth game, it's Herman against Dunning. So. Mm. The matchups are pretty much in our favor for pitching the whole way, hopefully. I'm not too worried. I'm not as long as the bats wake up. And you know what? Texas is a good place for the bats to wake up, man. The ball comes to life there a little bit. So maybe in this dead ball era, we can find some uh, find some life here. That'd be great, man. And we get a look at future Yankee Joey Gallo, too. Yes. Yeah. This win, baby. This is, our, this is our first game at the new stadium right oh i forgot about that yep we wow. went been there in, in the world series last year but... was it wasn't the old stadium named globe life field too Globe life park or something like that it was, yeah. it was very similar which is why i kind of forgot it was new yeah me because... too but yes they have a new ballpark they should have changed and, and we're about to play in it and uh you know oh. very excited by the way shout out to joe or shella for pinch hitting winning that game on friday uh, we uh, yeah. Geo, the god. Good job, buddy. I just Geo is my spirit animal. Yeah, we're. Oh man, and we're, I forgot. We're gonna see Yankees legend Nick Solak. Oh baby, oh that's exciting. What well, I'm happy you said that. That got you me. Know, that got I'm me. just so happy we got Brandon Jury though, and J Hap. Well, yeah. you know what. Hindsight yeah, sure. is 2020, man. At the time, did you really think it was a horrible trade? I liked Solak's bat. It's yes. their job. To I didn't know. really like Brandon Jury. It's gonna be a horrible. When we got him, I, I mean, actually I didn't really care about Solak. I wanted him to hard to start that season and Glaber. Yeah, From I genuinely thought, I thought that, that they deserved this the chance. Brandon Drury looked pretty good though at the time. I mean, like he had a pretty decent season before he came over, and there was some there was some untapped potential. I thought I really did. Like I, I looked at him and I said to myself, I think there is something there. If we can just tap into it, maybe it'll be worth it. I mean, just looking at the numbers, I mean, he wasn't great the year prior, but he showed enough where I'd be interested. I mean, regardless, I think the Yankees have a couple guys that are actually very reminiscent of Nick Solak and their system. So that's pretty exciting. I mean, Trevor Halvers and Josh Smith are basically right up that alley, except Trevor Halvers probably a, evidently is a home run god. So, you know, that's exciting. That's baseball season. That's baseball, baby. Well. Are you guys good? I think I covered everything I wanted to. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that covers everything. Two out of three against Tampa and Baltimore. Four and two on this road trip. If we, this two, is our last road trip, four. Series, right? Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah, we go back to the stadium to play the White Sox. Yeah, if you win this series, I mean, that's a very <laughs> successful road road trip. You know, winning all the series. Come on, so take at least three out of four. This, this okay. Yeah. Yep, three out of four. Anything less is completely unacceptable. Again, yeah, no, you're Texas, absolutely right. Who's not good at baseball? Exactly. They're bad at baseball. We need to keep. We need to keep. Just like gaining, Baltimore. Yeah, we need to keep gaining uh, games over 500. I want to get to. I want to get to. You know, I think we're like what five over 500 or four. Um, I think it's four. we are four over. Yeah. So like. Get 22 and 18. Yeah, get the four, get the five over, then get the ten over, then get the fifteen over, and then build, build, build. And if, then, if you, you win know. series, it's only gonna add up, man. That's the reality. Yep. So yep. just keep doing that, and the results will come in the end. That's all I care about. I would like some sweeps, of course. It, it'd be nice to start sweeping some series, but that's gonna come in due time. I mean, again, this, it, this is another small sample size thing that could change very quickly. So I'm not really gonna look too deep into that at the moment, at least. Yeah. For me personally, if that becomes a problem later in the year, we'll talk about it. Yeah, but right now it's like whatever. It, it, yeah. we're, we're... Anyway, I believe that is it, folks. This has been another successful episode of the Yankee Center podcast, and I will see you next time. See you, everybody. Peace. Heavy say bye. <laughs> see you, everyone. Love ah, you all. There we go.